spirit, that's the foundation for all humans to understand their meaning in life, is Genesis 126. Today there are 6.7 billion people on earth, and every one of those persons, whether they live in a palace or sleeping under a bridge, they are all made in God's image. That's right. And God created them in a unique way. When you study Genesis 126, it says, Let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. And then he says, And let them have dominion over the earth, the fish, the birds, the cattle, the plants, and over all the planet. And that statement, let them have dominion, is important. Because as I said in the last program, it is God literally delegating authority in the earth to humans, a spirit in a dirt body. That is God's legal agency on earth. Therefore, any spirit on earth without a body is illegal. Matter of fact, Benny, that is why demons have no authority here. You can cast them out because you have a body. Let me repeat that. The reason why humans can cast demons out is because the humans do have a body. Because it's the body that makes the human authoritatively legal on earth. You know, you just said something amazing. I don't know if you caught this, but I did. That is why demons seek a body, to regain their dominion. You just stole my next point. Whoa! That's my my point. God, that's amazing. That's the next point. We'll talk about that. Every spirit is trying to find a body. Can I give you another shocker? You bet. I'm Even ready. the Holy Spirit. Because he cannot function here without a body. That's why we are called the body of Christ. And it says, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Because He Himself needs to be legal here to function. Matter of fact, your most important asset on earth is not your spirit. It's your body. Because without your body, your spirit also becomes illegal. That's why when you die, you have to live. Every human that loses a body has to leave the planet. Slow down, Pastor. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just... Uh... You're running a little faster than we want you to right now, but go back, go back to that point again. That's, say that again. A human is a spirit in a dirt body. And every spirit needs a body to be legal on planet Earth because of God's law, let them. When he said let them, So right. when a human loses their bodies, they become illegal also. So that's why they have to leave. That's why the scriptures say very clearly, absent from the body, you've got to be out of here, present yeah. with the Lord, because the Lord is in the supernatural experience. And so, when a human leaves their bodies, they become illegal on earth. Your most important asset on earth, therefore, again, is not your spirit. Right. It's your body. And that is why, this is going to bless you, God puts so much value on your body, physically, that He provided healing to make sure it lasts long. <laughs> this matter of fact your ministry is built on this principle if the body was not necessary for earth you would have no healing ministry healing ministry is really not for the spirit spirits don't get sick the healing ministry is for the physical house sure. that's why the Benny Hinn ministry is so important because you are focusing on protecting God's presence on earth when a human gets healed and become well again, God himself is able to stay here legally longer. But you know, you've said so much that's just stirring my, in my spirit. I mean, you just said some powerful things that explain why Jesus had to become flesh. Now you're rushing me. Don't steal my I mean, point. it's just like... In this book, so much. I do a whole chapter on why God had to become a man. You see, God didn't become a man because it was a good idea. He didn't become a man because he wanted to sympathize with us. No. God had to become a man because he himself made it necessary. That's why God could not stop Adam and Eve interfering with them with the picking of that fruit. He would have been violating his own word and Satan would have been able to that. accuse God of breaking his word. Let me say something that changed my life. Do you know that the fall of man was a result of the faithfulness of God. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Explain that slowly. Pastor. All right. If God had come into the earth as a spirit 
without a body to interfere with Adam and Eve, he would have violated his own word. Gotcha. Once God breaks his word once, you and I could never trust him again. Because we won't know when he would change his mind. That's why God says, I placed my word above myself. So, saints, what he's saying is he gave man authority and dominion over the earth. And that's why the scripture says, the earth has he given to the children of men. So much so that God won't even interfere. Absolutely. Psalm 115, verse 15, is the verse you quoted just now. It says, the highest heavens belong to the Lord, That's right. but the earth he gave to the children of men. Exactly. In other words, God is saying, up here is my territory, that's your territory. And for me to come into your territory, I need your permission, your license. So, in other words, like when somebody says, well, you know, why are all these things happening on earth? How can God allow it? Ah, you get it. Exactly. exactly. He can't do anything. Watch this. We get poverty, crime, Frustration, depression, broken homes, broken marriages, wars, corruption, ethnic cleansing, terrorism. I mean, people are bombing themselves and destroying people. We got problems all over the world. And the question is, if this God is such a good God, you Christians talk about this good God, why can't he fix this? Oh, or stop it. Listen to his answer. Exactly. Listen to his answer. God says, if my people, not a if means, look, I would like to fix this. But I can't fix it without a human giving me cooperation. If my people, if I could just find some people who are called by my name, if they would clean themselves up, humble themselves and pray, get rid of their sins, then when they ask me anything, I will hear where? In heaven. Then when I connect with this human agreement, then I can come in and I can heal their land. You see, interfering in earth by God is, is totally up to us. Listen to the words of Jesus, Benny. This is a powerful statement. And we don't understand it. But listen carefully to these words. Carefully. He says, Wherever any two humans on earth agree. Listen to the, to, to the prerequisite now. He says, Wherever any two humans agree on earth concerning anything on earth. Specifically saying earth. If they can agree concerning anything on earth, once they agree, then it can be done of my Father who is in heaven. See, heaven depends on earth for interference. If he can just find two people like you and I to agree, we agree for God to do this thing. Then God says, heaven says, thank you very much for the permission, and he can come. But heaven, it's incredible that earth waits for heaven to do things. The truth is, Heaven is waiting on earth to get things done. Listen, I, saints, I, this, is, this is, give the Lord a mighty hand, you bet. Hallelujah. This is so amazing. Hallelujah. Uh, you don't realize what, 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 what you're doing to me. Just Hallelujah. sitting here listening. I remember Catherine Kuhlman looking up and Absolutely. saying, Lord, I have nothing to give you but my love. If you want, <laughs> if you want a nothing, here's a nothing. And she talked about the fact that God is looking for vessels. God is seeking for intercessors. He is see, seeking for men to stand in the gap. He said to Israel, since I find none, destruction will come. There you go. Matter of fact, how many times have God repeated, Benny, I sought for a man? I mean, if God is awesome, omnipotent, omniscient, why does he need to look for a human to get things done? Because of the law of permission. Let me give you an, an, an interesting encounter here. Everything that God did through Moses, you know, when God, when you study Genesis and you read about the story of Moses in the Exodus as well, you find something very strange. It says in, Je in Exodus chapter 3, it says, God says, I have heard the cries of the people. I have heard the groanings of the children of Israel yeah. in Egypt and the bondage. Then he says, in that same verse, chapter, he says, and I have come down to deliver them. Now that sounds as if God is going to do something by himself. <laughs> then God puts a, bur a burning bush to attract a man. Why can't God take care of Pharaoh by himself? Why can't God invade that government and disrupt the process and to set him free by himself? He's illegal. So God then has to get the attention of a human first, then spend hours, maybe even days, trying to convince this one human to work with him. 
Moses came up with every Moses. single excuse you could find, and here's the Almighty God still Good tolerating God. him, saying, look, uh, if you can't talk, I'll speak for you. If you got problems, I'll solve it for you. If you're afraid, I'll give you courage. In other words, whatever you need, please work with me. Cause I Just give me your body. Give me your body. And when Here, Lord, <laughs> I give it all. Amen. I give it all. Dear God. <clears throat> wow, wow, wow. And when you study Moses... Are you getting blessed like I am? Dear Jesus. Sorry about that. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Benny, when you study Moses or any Lord. human that was successful with God, you'll find this dependency God has on humanity. God says, Moses, please, quickly, agree with me because your brother, your nephew, is on the way. Your brother's on the way. We've got to get this work done. I need a human to agree. As soon as Moses agrees with God, God says, okay, let's go. I'm talking to myself. Right now. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm just, you know, his eyes go... Go through and through, throughout the ah, whole earth, looking for a man. See, all the scriptures come alive now. You man, I mean, just, that's what, what you're doing Absolutely. to me. Absolutely. Now watch Moses. Moses now says, okay, God, you got me. I'll, I'll cooperate. Everything Moses asked God to do, God did. God said, Moses, you go to Pharaoh. You tell him some things. And whatever you tell him, I'll do. So Moses tells Pharaoh these things. Let the people go or otherwise these things would happen. Everything Moses announced, God performed. He couldn't just perform it. He needed Moses to pronounce it. So Moses says, there will be flies. God said, thank you very much. And he blew flies. Moses said, there will be blood in all the water. God said, okay, thank you very much. And he made all the water blood. Moses said, there shall be locusts. God said, thank you very much. And he, in other words, Moses had to initiate the action for God to produce the product. It's like Adam saying, we'll call this an elephant. God said, oh, all right. You got it. He didn't change his mind. Come on, you're yeah. getting it. I mean, he was letting men. He could not name those animals. He was illegal. He says, whatever you call them, that will be Okay, name. so then, the reason much does not happen on earth that God wants to see happen is our fault. Uh, let me put it another way. Our prayer is a strange experience. We normally, uh, we normally ask God, to do things. God is telling us to command him with permission to do it for Dear us. God. Uh, when we pray many times, we pray, and this blew my mind one day. I was praying. I says, oh Lord, heal this person and do this. And God says, look, are you begging me or commanding me? He says, look, don't speak to me. Speak to the situation. That's a very important difference. Oh, Lord, heal this man. God says, no, no, no. Talk to the sickness. I'm already healing the guy. What I need is permission to get the healing on earth. So when we pray, our prayers are contaminated in the sense that we ask God to do things. God is always working. Every single problem you have is already solved. Every sick person is already healed. That's why you don't have to really lay hands on a million people to heal them in India. You don't have to. They already heal. What God's problem is getting the healing to earth. Jesus said, my father is always working. That's an important statement. Why did he make that statement? Because in John chapter 5, the people had a problem with Jesus. They said, he had just healed a man, raised the dead, cleansed the leper cast out a demon they saw him do all these activities his work their question was where did you get his authority from let me put it in modern terms what authorized you to do those actions his response was amazing he said I always do what I see my father do think he said my father healed this man a thousand years ago I saw this man raising the dead a long time ago. In heaven, this man is already raised. He says, but on earth, I am the one who's making it manifested. Because God cannot do it without a human agency. Jesus was necessary for Christ. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Pastor, slow down now. What you mean is, Christ made, Jesus made Christ legal on earth. Jesus was the body. Has he always been this deep here? 
I mean, he's, he, it's amazing what he's saying. Hallelujah. What, so so re repeat that. Christ is God. Spirit. Right. That's why Christ needed a body to come to earth legally. Right. That's why God had to put the seed of Christ in the womb of Mary to build an earth body around it. Right. So that Christ could become legal. The angel told Mary to name the child. Jesus. Not to name the resident. Yay. Because... <laughs> All right. Isaiah says this in Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah says, For unto us a child, child is born, born, and a son is given. given. Now right. the son was never born. That's Only the child. Mary yeah, yeah, is yeah, yeah. not yeah. the mother of wait, the wait, son. Wait, I got to have a place break here. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>